great faith in you, you know. Have you, Mavis? Yes, I have. Great faith. And I know you only said those cruel things to me because you were upset. I was upset, Mavis. I still am. I know, I know. But you're right. It's not fair to blame you. Oh, well, I'm glad you realised that. No, it's pointless to blame you for being what you are. Might as well blame the rain for being wet. Just what are you trying to imply, Derek? No, I'm just saying. I know you don't deliberately sabotage my efforts. Uh, might I be right in thinking this is Mr. Wilton's residence? Uh, yes. Oh, splendid. Uh, and, and is he at home? Yes. Oh, splendid yet again. Uh, I'll surprise him. Oh, excuse me. Dirk, met again, old chap. Good Lord, it's... Uh, Norris, Norris Cole. Of course <laughs> it is. What, what a surprise. Exactly what I was saying to your cleaning lady here. Excuse um, me, I'm not the cleaning lady. I'm Mrs Wilton. Uh, yeah, uh, Mavis, this is the gentleman who rescued me on the motorway <gasps> when I was alone, abandoned and forgotten in that benighted <laughs> service station. Norris here played the Good Samaritan. Oh, it was my pleasure entirely. And as you said that night, Dirk, if ever you care to visit a while, feel free. Well, here I am. Oh, finally. Name? Please. Mr. Please. Well, Norris Cole has stated on my various items of identification. Hmm. Is there a problem? Look, I, I can't help but notice that according to your clock, it's 1657, and it says here you close at 1700 hours, so would you mind expediting this process? That all seems to be in order. Oh, there's a relief. Well, come on, the parcel. Another new chamber of hell. Don't be so dramatic. Your delivery card, please. You have to come back tomorrow. You've been too hasty. Too hasty? What on earth do you mean? Your parcel's still on the van. But we've come all this way. Is this some sort of joke? I mean, why do people blight us with this endless bureaucracy? Tomorrow, 8.45 to 12.30. Yes, yes, and yes, then I can read. And I shall be here at 8.44 prompt. Now, I need to take your name, because I'm holding you personally responsible for the safe transfer of my goods. It's Greaves, Mo Greaves. What's Mo short for, Mojo? Morris. Oh, right, Mr Greaves. I shall see you tomorrow morning. Have you ever thought of taping yourself and then playing it back later? Singing? No, wittering. Sorry? It would be when you heard the levels of banality you're capable of sinking. <clears throat> A, E, I, O, U. I hardly think this is a time and a place for a selfie, Norris. <laughs> Do I look like the kind of person who'd take a selfie? These are my vocal exercises. <laughs> I'll have you know, Laurence Olivier used to do this before every performance. <laughs> I think we're here to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but, not King Lear. Quite, but there's nothing wrong in doing it authoritatively. Do you know, the way you stand can alter the timbre of your voice, for example. A, E, I, O, U. <laughs> There's something here for you. <laughs> because, well, it's tradition, isn't it, for, for, for the groom to give his best man a present. And I couldn't wish for a better best man. Oh, no thanks, Dad. For your support, your advice, <laughs> and most of all, your sense of humour. Oh, yeah. Go on. Well, that's very good of you, Norris. I left a black coffee somewhere. No, it's on the occasional table in there. All right. Unspeakable swine! Why? Why, damn you? Well, answer me. It was a prank. Put me through hell. 
My wife has been out of her mind. All those stupid messages, postcards. Oh, Terry upstairs is a steward on the airline. You may be a laughing stock, a neighbourhood joke. I could kill you for this coal. I could. All those sleepless nights I've had worrying, watching, waiting, arrested by the police when you lured me to the red wreck. Oh, the sarcasm, the humiliation. And you think I could take all this and do nothing? No. Revenge. Batman, do you fancy a brew? Superheroes don't need refreshment. Oh, right. Well, would you mind stepping inside? Because superheroes don't half show me up. Look, you may be embarrassed, Rita. I may be embarrassed. But sometimes we have to do things for the greater good. I bet Martin Luther King never put on a pair of tights. Look, I have to make sure Jude and Angie don't leave. I mean, George up there in, in the plane, anything could happen. And, well, he could, ugh, I'd never forgive myself. What exactly are you planning to do? Uh, well, that's all will be revealed in good time. That means you've no idea. Oh. That's for justice! Grandfathers for justice! Norris Cole, you're showing yourself up. Get down here at once. Can't hear you. Or if you fall. Do you want a chip, Rita? No, I want him to come down. Do you mind holding him, Dad? Eh? What is he doing? I will not be moved until Jude and Angie agree to stay and talk to Mary. There's no one here, you daft ape. Then somebody better go and get them. I shall, I shall not be moved. I shall, I shall, I shall not be moved. Grandfathers for justice! Grandfathers for justice! It's you. It's you that drives me mad. Thanks to Roy and Haley borrowing her motorhome for this little road trip, I have had the pleasure of Mary morning, noon and night. Oh, nice! Oh, hi. Uh, no, do be precise, Norris. Tongue's a wag. <laughs> she flosses her way through embarrassing bodies. Norris is despondent because there are two barbecues occurring concurrently today. I have been invited to both and Norris has been invited to neither. Well, don't worry, Norris. Ryan and Ailey are due back soon. Oh, that is music to my ears. To show loyalty to my comrade, I shall be boycotting both Barbies. <laughs> two coffees and a nice finger. <laughs> Norris obey. <laughs> It was all her fault. Now, Norris. We were having a quiet war around one of the legs when Madam here asked me to hold her sausage roll while she took a picture of some geese. Well, I, I don't know if the flash from the camera startled them or, or if it was a flaky pastry from my sausage roll. Either way, it was mayhem. Hordes of filthy animals flying towards me. Norris has a bit of a phobia where birds are concerned. It was nightmarish. I, I felt like Tippi Hedren. Her from The Birds. Oh, I love that film. What? When have you seen The Birds? Oh, Nana Blanche used to put it on for me when I had trouble sleeping. Unfortunately, I think his high-pitched screams of terror just egged them on. Egged. Good one. I, I, I tried to run away. He slipped on a cow pat. I could have broken my neck. And, and then this one abandons me in some local hospital that looks more like something out of the Crimean War. Well, I made sure you were well cared for. And I told you, Mother had an emergency. Oh, what? Did she need a can of tuna opening? Well, you, you must have been OK for them to discharge you. The only reason why they let me out was I assured them that I had round-the-clock care at home. Oh! And who's the kind-hearted friend who's going to do that? <laughs> what? Beg your pardon. Oh, forget it. I thought you said something. Oh. Why is that? What's what? That's your phone. But it's, it's, it's the talking clock. Yeah. Well, you, you must have forgotten to switch it off. Well, I, I rang them earlier, but I've made another call since then. Well, either way, it'll be costing you 30p a minute, so I'd switch it off if I were you. I, I, I shall make a complaint about that. Oh, I would. Mm -hmm. Hello. 
Yes. No, I have not been on the phone. <laughs> Norris, put that back. Rita, call the police. Call the what? What? What have you done? I'd give anything to see Betty and Blanche again. Mm. Dear, dear friends. And I'm sure you will, Rita, when you reach the afterlife. Oh. Yes, but happily, that won't be ages yet. <laughs> oh, Rita, you must be so relieved to have been given the all clear. I am, Norris. I am. So, all in all, the future's looking bright for all of us. Mm. Hey, and that wasn't the scariest thing in here, that seance. Oh, no. One time, no, oh, you'll laugh at this, Norris here proposed to me oh. and to Emily. You little raver, Norris. <laughs> Polly and Maury, I didn't know my husband was so progressive. <laughs> it, it was a joke. You see, they'd been prying into my private life, so I was just getting my own back. Look, I don't want to be a party pooper, but are you planning on doing a tap? Okay. You do still work here, even if it is your last day. Oh, I remember your first day. Oh, where does the time go? Now, you've already got the keys to the kingdom, but, you see, I've always prided myself on keeping my frontage nice and tidy, and I want you to promise me that in my absence you will continue with the tradition. I promise. There you are. Goodbye, dear friend. I I'll miss you terribly. Yes, and I, I shall miss you too. You're certainly a one-off. Oh, I hate goodbyes, me. Mm, me too. Stop milking it, Nozza. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. <laughs> when are you coming back to visit us? Oh, well, that would be telling, wouldn't it? Mm. All right, come on then, Norris. Give us a kiss goodbye. Uh, he's he's spoken, spoken for. Oh, oh. obviously, a bit of a struggle, Maguire. Cheese sandwich, please stay down. Norris, we bonded over our love of Sir Cliff Richard. I've had many times, I can tell you, times when innocence I trade for company and children saw me cry. Commotion. You're right. Well, I will be when we can get away from Mary's caterwaul. Yet these miss you lie. 